In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up Git and GitHub. You may have heard of them for coding because they're amazing about storing your changes. In a very simple sense, they're like Google Docs revision history. You say, hmm, who changed this in this document? But Git is way better. You can have multiple branches of code, so if you want to test something out without breaking the main version, you can go test it out, and your partners can continue working on the main thing. Then you check in with that branch and say, hey guys, I've updated this thing. And Git will magically integrate your changes. Git is the software that's used to store your commits, basically saying, I changed these files on this day, here's my little increments of progress. Git Hub is where people store the projects. So if you're working on a team, you can be working on a project, and you commit your changes, and you push them up to GitHub. And in that central GitHub repository, everybody else works off of that. You're on the same page with your code, and not duplicating any work. First you need to download Git. So I'm on Windows, of course, you could pick your operating system. I've already downloaded this, but here's how to install. Say yes to the Windows prompt. I'll be fast forwarding through a few parts of this installation. Of course you need to say next, and then pick a directory, program files is fine. I leave all these things the way they are. Definitely recommend having the Windows Explorer integration checked. Next, and then a start menu folder. And then the default is this one. This will be fine for most things, but you won't be able to use Unix commands. If you know what that means, basically, there are certain commands that Windows uses, like dir, to list the contents of a directory. But Unix uses ls to do the same exact thing. If you choose this, it won't affect the Windows command prompt. Git will still be accessible through the command line, but I prefer to use this one, which allows you access to some of those Unix commands. And it does say there's a warning, but I haven't had problems. So I would recommend the third option. And next, this is complicated to explain, but basically different operating systems use different ways to end files. Pick the first one. If you're on Windows, either of these is fine, I just prefer the first one. Leave these two things checked. Now that the installation is complete, you don't need to check either of these things, and just say finish. To check, I'm just going to open command prompt, and then type in git dash dash version press enter, and you should see the git version. If you somehow get a this is not a recognized command, that means git hasn't properly added to path, and you're going to need to look up how to add it to the path. I haven't ever had any problems. Git always added itself to path whenever I've installed. A lot of the stuff you do for git will need to be through the command line. It looks scary and from like the 1980s, but it's not all that complicated. You'll access all the git commands with the prefix git and then space and then you type your commands. Now that git the software is installed, you could be all set, but I prefer especially for beginners to recommend to download the github desktop app. You don't have to use GitHub with it, and you can have repositories from any other source, like GitLab, or your own private repositories, but the GitHub desktop app is nice and simple, and has a good graphical way of adding files and syncing. It's a little easier than the command line. You can still use the command line, but I would download GitHub desktop. Click here to download, which I already have, so I'm just going to install it, and you say install. This doesn't really have any settings, it just installs very quickly, and it should disappear and open the program. Take a little while to load up the first time. Now the program has started, you will need a GitHub account, so if you don't already have one, just go to github.com and sign up. So you can put in your username and your password, say login. Now we need to configure Git so that any commits you make on this computer will be associated with the correct person, the correct account, when you sync up to GitHub. Technically, it doesn't need to match the same name and email you provide with your GitHub account, but it's helpful if it does. You might find instructions about doing this through the command line through something called git config or editing a global text file, but github desktop is taking care of that right here. So you say continue, and then I'm gonna skip the repositories. It comes with the tutorial one, but we're gonna go github.com, go to your profile, and then click on the repositories tab. Easiest way I've found is you can create a directly on GitHub and clone it. So you create something up here, say new, and you name it. This has to be unique for your user. You can't have two repositories named the same thing. I'm just going to call it demo. You could add a description and keep it public. Most of the time you have to pay for private repositories, and I'm going to leave it empty with no readme and no git ignore. Create a repository, and you should be prompted with this screen. I'll be showing you how to copy it both ways. Easiest one would probably be set up in desktop, and it'll say, hey, launch the application. Now it pops up browser folder. Where do you want to store this repository? And it's made you one right in documents and GitHub. That's perfectly fine. Say OK. Now you say it's cloning demo. This plus sign to add repository. Add means local path, something that's on your computer and you just want to say, hey, let's use it in the GitHub desktop app. This is create something from scratch on your computer. Clone is go up to your repositories 
and clone one down. Now what has that done? A whole lot of nothing on the surface. Because you can right click on that and say open in Explorer. Now it shows you a folder in GitHub called demo and then all there is is, is this dot git folder. This git folder is a hidden folder and you might not be able to see it unless you do view and then say hidden items. This is what tells git this is a repository. Don't touch it. Just leave it alone. Let git update it. But right now there's nothing in our repository. I'm just going to paste in some files and then if you go in, back to the desktop, you say, hmm, whoa, here's a bunch of new things. This little thing here says added, and you can click here to see what's the contents of the file. See, 1.txt, if we go over here, 1.txt, that lines up with this contents right here. And if I wanted to add more stuff, I'd add a new line and click Control S to save it, and you see it updated over there. I won't be talking about branching or much more advanced stuff in Git, but it's really easy in the desktop app. You just click the checkboxes next to the files you want to include, and then you say summary. Just say added files, and now you see commit to master, that's now added. You can't do a commit without any message. This describes what you changed. You could go super in-depth with the description, but I just usually prefer to just have a short and explanatory header. And then you say commit to master. What has that done? Well, that has staged all your files in Git, so that when you double-click this again, here's a new line. Save this, and then hey, what if I wanted to rename this file to 23? Now if I go back to Git, go back into the changes tab, and see what has happened. 1.txt. This little red means we We've deleted this line and replaced it with this stuff. And 2 no longer exists. This is the minus. It's deleted. And it's been renamed to this. Add a little message to this commit and commit to the master. If this still seems a bit weird. Just wait a second. Now we do publish. Now it's going to sync up to your GitHub repository. Now if you go over back to here, refresh. Instead of this blank, you see, whoa, here's all my exact same files. You can click it, and you can actually preview. But the real power is in the commits part. Right now, I'm on the master branch. Go into the commits and say, here, this is the first thing. What did I do? Well, added all these files with the green, and you can see browse files. And if you click on this copy of 1.txt, it's like this. But if I open demo in a new tab and go back to the commits, now if I click on renamed stuff, this is the second commit. Instead of showing you all your files and thinking, what the heck did I change in this? It shows you only the stuff that has been changed. And if you click on this browse files, you can get an exact copy of what is 1.txt at this point in time. Compare that to this, the earlier version. Hey, this has the extra new line. And that's really where Git shines. It shows you exactly what you have done to your code in the past. So if you mess something up, you can go, wait, where was it working? And you can check out your code and see the exact point in time where you added something that made it not work. Going back into the desktop app, I can edit a few more files. Say if I rename this bitmap, just call it picture and this 23, I do some stuff and I'm going to add to this line and I'm going to delete from this line. Now if I save, go back to GitHub, back into the changes tab. Sometimes it wants to go back in the history for some reason, but look, 23, what did I do? This line disappeared. Now this line, remember, this is the one that I added to, but it actually sees that as you deleted this line and you replaced it with this line. And then of course I did add this one. But the red and green highlighting is really what tells you what's happened to the file. And of course you see here, bitmap has been renamed, it's empty. This is a binary file. GitHub is not very good at storing media files like pictures, movies, or music, but it's very good at text. And you can see this one has been added. So it basically deletes the old one and adds a new one. Just gonna add another commit message and commit it. And now instead of publish, you just say sync. And if you go back, you have three commits. And the third renamed pick, there we have the changes listed. And over here is browser repository. Each time you change a file, it actually takes like a snapshot. So you can go back in any point in time and see, as we did in the beginning, this is what the files looked like at the very beginning. Whereas compared to now, we have the renamed one and we have the changed file. It is amazing about looking for files and compressing the changes so it doesn't have to store duplicate versions to infinity. That's what's great about Git. This is public, so anybody can see your code, but only the people you invite can actually collaborate. So you just type here and add a username if you wanted somebody else to work on the group project. For that, I'd recommend using branching and more advanced stuff. But I really think the GitHub desktop app is great because you can click and add stuff with the simple checkboxes instead of the command line, which I'll get to in a second, and you don't have to enter your password every time. GitHub desktop uses the SSH key automatically. You might get an email saying, hey, a new SSH key has been added to your account. That's the whole point, and as long as you recognize the computer, that should be fine. One thing you might encounter is, say you accidentally renamed the containing folder. You just called it dem instead of demo. Now when you go into git, it say, like, ooh, ooh, we can't find the repository. Now you need to go locate it. And of course, we know exactly where it is. It's in GitHub. 
and then it's in dem instead of demo. You click OK and it finds everything. Basically it's looking for that dot git folder. So you just need to make sure that if you rename it, it might disappear, but as long as you know where you put it, it's fine. And you can right click and remove it, but that just removes it from the GitHub desktop app. It still keeps all the files on your computer. And for the command line, you can right click and say open in git shell. That opens this weird PowerShell thing. I'm going to run git status to see what's up. Basically this tells you, hey, you're on the master branch, your branch is up to date, there's nothing to omit, there's no files changed. As soon as I change this to 2, 2 again, and I do up arrow to do git status, you say, hey, this file has been deleted and this has been renamed. This is one way to use git from the command line. When you right click on the folder tree over here, you can say open git bash here. It's a similar command line tool. You can also run git status to see what's changed. But both of these have Unix commands. For instance, ls and dir both show you the contents of the directory. And the third and final way to operate the command line is through the actual Windows command line. You do shift and then you right click and then you say open command window here. That just gets rid of the pain of navigating through a bunch of changed directory. You run git status here and you see the same kind of thing. Most of the time I prefer the ease of the Windows command line. DIR works to show you the contents but also ls. Since we chose that third option when installing git, it installed the Unix commands. But imagine you're doing this for the first time and you don't have the desktop app. I'm going to go open the GitHub folder, just create a new folder, go into that folder. Now shift, open a new command window here. Now the other way to clone it is to say clone and download. And then you copy this right here. This is the HTTP path. And you do a git clone. This means make a copy on my computer. Paste that in and press enter. And now what's happened? If you look over here, now there's a folder called demo. If you do git status here, you say, uh oh, this is not a git repository. So you actually need to change directors into demo because that's where that git folder is. Do the up arrow twice to find the previous thing I typed. And this says on branch master nothing to commit. This has made a separate copy of the repository on my computer. Not necessarily recommend doing this, but just for testing purposes, you can have multiple versions on your computer. It just might get confusing. But if I make a commit here, notice when I remain that folder there, didn't change this one over here because this is still 23 and this one says it's 22. So what do you need to do? Well you'd actually need to go in here, commit those changes, press enter to commit and sync. Now if you go to the commits and refresh you see we have one more rename 22. But why doesn't this know about this? Well do a git status again on branch master nothing to commit. Still doesn't know anything's wrong. Git pull. That says go up to the github server pull down any changes. Now Look right here. This file was changed. And I forgot to mention, if you needed to paste stuff into the command line, you can always do right click and paste on any version of command prompt, or shift insert works most of the time. If you're on Windows 10, control V works. Earlier versions of Windows, control V is actually killing the current process, so don't do that. But that's especially helpful when you're cloning a project for the first time. Now we're in here, back to the new version of demo. Now you see, hey, it's back to 22. Well, what if I want to make changes and add them to the command line? Go to add 22. I'm going to add a new line, save it, and close the file. Now if I run git status, this tells me, hey, you've modified this file. What do we need to do? Git add 22.txt. Type in the name of the file you want to add. Now run git status. Now it's green. This means it's ready to be committed, but it hasn't been committed yet. Now you need to do a git commit. If you type this, this window pops up. And it's not exactly helpful. I renamed something. 22. Again, how do you get out of this? Well, escape colon Q or WQ. Now press enter. See down here this has happened. That's for quit and of course it didn't work. So you might need to do escape colon WQ and there we go. Run git status. Your branch is ahead. You need to actually use git push. Now it'll prompt you for your username and password. Usually that happens on the command line, but Windows popped up with it. another security message. And if you go and refresh over here, rename 22 again. I'm just going to copy this file, and I'm going to copy this file. Now if you run git status, git status, as you may notice, is getting used a lot. It tells you, hey, these are red, these haven't been added. Basically the workflow from git command line is you do a git status to find out what you did. Git add adds the files. Git commit commits them, and git push pushes them up to GitHub. Now you don't want to add these one at a time. Just do git add hyphen a for all. Git status, see they're both added. Git commit. Now a shortcut instead of that big verbose commit message is hyphen m after commit, then do a space. Now in quotes, put your message. And I'm just being lazy here. Don't be this lazy when you're writing your commit messages. Two files were added, now do a git push. And you might need to add your password again, but since I just did so, you don't need to. 
and you refresh, you see it's done. Another thing that happens on the git command line is sometimes you try and enter the password and it looks like nothing is happening. You type and no characters appear, but git is saving your password. Just make sure you type it correctly. And if you go back into here, what we need to do is sync. Sync does a pull and push at the same time. It's just a little simpler in the GitHub desktop app, as you might see. Now, the interesting thing we've done is we have two versions of demo here, and unfortunately, you can't have two concurrent versions of the same repository on the same computer using GitHub desktop, but you can use the GitHub command line, so that could be an advantage of the command line. These files are identical to these files. That's because when we synced, it went up here and it said, hey, is there anything new? Let's pull in those two commits and change those files. It's been a very quick introduction and there's tons more stuff to cover, but hopefully that gets you started with Git and GitHub. I really prefer the desktop app because it's really easy and you don't have to enter your password all the time and it's a little more graphical showing you what you changed.